I think one of the key challenges, and I, I guess it's come to the top of the agenda with the tragic events in Paris, is safety of journalists and, and how you achieve that. And I, and I mean that in, in a wide sense. Obviously, there are physical dangers. I mean, the Committee for the Protection of Journalism uh, said, I think, that there were 61 deaths of journalists last year, 2014. So, you know, that's clearly a big issue. But you know, from, from my perspective as a, as a lawyer, there are, there are issues around the, uh, the, if you like, the legal safety of lawyers, how you make sure that the laws are protecting them when they, when they should be protecting them, uh, how you uh, control governments who are minded not to do those sorts of things. But also there are obviously issues around the technical protections. I mean, the Snowden story, but the, 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 sort of the, the, the things that have come out of that down the line, it's certainly in the UK, we've had lots of regulation around uh, counterterrorism, surveillance, uh, and that is starting to impinge on, on journalists. I think you know, technology from, from the sort of practical journalist side has completely revolutionised the business. You know, it's taken it from a, a single paper once a day, printed in the UK in the case of The Guardian, to a 24-hour-a-day global rolling news organization and and that's only achieved by by technology you know it's it's allowed us to do those things it allows us to react incredibly quickly it allows us to pick up a plurality of voices that, that we never used to but the, the downside of technology is uh, again what we've seen from Snowden on one level that there is now a battle between uh, accessing information uh, around the, the, the sort of desire to, to acquire so much information that it starts treading on people's privacy rights. Uh, that throws up all sorts of complicated issues, as again we've seen in the last year with Google Spain and those sort of cases. When I started in, in the sort of me as a media lawyer 20 years ago, um, a, a journalist was very easy to, de to define as a concept. It was generally someone who was employed by a commercial professional news organisation. Uh, you knew who their name was. You may not always see a picture. Today you might see a picture as well. But you could sort of box that off. Whereas nowadays, journalism uh, and journalists encompass an enormous range. It's such a flexible uh, word. It can be a, a blogger. Uh, who writes, you know, one story for a local paper. Uh, it, it can be someone who writes multiple stories for multiple organisations, has no affiliation to any one organisation. Uh, they can do that anonymously. Um, and so the complexities around journalists and journalism and following on from that, who then acquires the natural protections that the law in certain some, some situations has given to journalists or journalism, for example, source protection, becomes a really difficult issue. And, and there are cases going on in America and in the UK and elsewhere uh, around people trying to say, well, I don't have to tell you this because I'm a journalist. And uh, I mean, I think that feeds in, in, in a way to also what's the public interest? Because one answer to, to this who is a journalist uh, conundrum these days is, um, it's someone who's writing in the public interest, whether that public interest is local, regional, national, global, but, but is writing something that has a public interest. But that also reflects back on the sense that certainly in the UK there's this constant debate um, about whether the public interest is things that people find interesting uh, or it's more highbrow than that. And certainly I think in America, for example, uh, what the public find interesting is probably a more acceptable definition than it is in the UK. Accountability is another uh, area, I think, for journalists going forward. Uh, I mean, accountability, f for starters, in, in, in the legal sense, to whom are you accountable? Obviously, journalists who write for a, for a, a paper where they have a, some sort of employment relationship are accountable to their editor. But if there is then an issue post-publication or indeed pre-publication about the conduct of the journalist, you know, who's going to judge that? Is that the court in the country where the journalist lives, where the newspaper is based, where the complainant is based? Uh, and it, it's not just about the law. I mean, quite a lot of countries, including the UK uh, and quite a lot of Europe, have um, ethical regimes that people sign up to. They have codes of conduct that are not law, but nonetheless, they, they apply.
there are uh, also uh, issues for us all to think about around, around quality and how we maintain quality. I mean, Nick Davis has written a lot about what he calls journalism, uh, but we see uh, constantly lobbying from politicians, we see lobbying from big business, uh, and so there are, there are issues around the sort of quality of what we write and who is, who's directing that. You know, where's, where's, what's the journalist's role in that? Uh, but I think that also plays out in inaccuracy terms. And, and ultimately, quality control has got to be about surely trying to get as close to the truth as you can. And that's an accuracy issue. Now, I mean, if you mess up on accuracy in a big way, that may lead you down a defamation route. You may be liable for defamation if you've got something so wrong that it's affected someone's reputation. But there, there are also ethical issues around that. Uh, you know, journalists should be striving to get things right. And you know, one of the positive things about the transformation that there's been in journalism over the years is that, I guess, the voice of the citizen on the street, people can come and say, you've got that wrong. I was there. You weren't there. You're just reporting. I've seen it, I can tell you. So the, you know, the sort of plurality of voices that, that, that we get uh, does allow better quality control on one level because there are more people challenging what was once the sole voice of the expert journalist. And that's, that's going. Um, but still, it's easy to, uh, to take things at face value, to, to assume that something is the voice of someone who's in a country a long way away, and how do you check that out? So there are... There are some quite strong um, ethical obligations on journalists not to just accept things as they're fed to them, but to challenge them and question them.